After being with Willow for seven years, she said that nice guys simply don't understand romance and turned to the embrace of a young college student, seeking the excitement she longed for. This time, I didn't try to stop her, threw away the diamond ring I bought for her, and burned the wedding dress I chose for her. I boarded a plane late at night and left Beijing. Her friends started betting on how long it would take before I begged for reconciliation. Willow laughed heartily and said, not even a day, that simp will come back begging. But day after day, I remained silent. She couldn't sit still any longer and called me. George, come back when you're done playing. A shy female voice interrupted her. Willow, apologize quickly, or someone else might take your place. Willow, gripping her phone tightly, trembling, asked, who are you? Let George answer the phone. Anna leaned down and kissed me. He can't come to the phone. He needs to rest. If it's important, wait until I wake him with a kiss on the seventh year with Willow. I bought a diamond ring and the wedding dress she liked, mustered up the courage to propose, but unfortunately, I was a few minutes late to the party that day. I happened to overhear her chatting with her friends. You mean George? That man is such a bore, doesn't understand romance or fun. Being with him is dull and monotonous, no surprises or excitement, just routine. I'm tired of it. Willow took a sip of red wine, shaking her head. Seven years of this, wouldn't you be bored? Her friends nodded in agreement. True. Life is about enjoyment and freedom. If all you have is a three-point routine, it's not worth it, even if he's handsome, if he just smiles and tells you to drink more hot water when you're upset, without offering any emotional value, it's not worth it. But George is really handsome. Last time on Willow's birthday, he wore a full black suit, looking better than any celebrity. Seriously. Willow, you liked him so much back then. Can you really let go now? Without hesitation, Willow responded, Girls, never give your heart to a man, and never take a man too seriously. Otherwise, they'll control you completely. You have to keep them guessing to stay in control. One friend quickly changed her tune. Then you wouldn't mind if I pursue George, right? Willow took another sip of wine, glanced at her with barely noticeable disdain, and said slowly, Go ahead, if you like him. Who cares about a simp? Girl, don't you feel embarrassed? Have some boundaries. What do you see in him? That he doesn't shower. The room burst into laughter. That night, I didn't enter the private room, found an excuse, and went home early. Willow didn't ask a single word and hung up the phone. It was probably that night when my once burning heart completely extinguished. In a couple of days, rumors spread, a sophomore guy was pursuing Willow. At a friend's gathering, Willow brought him along as soon as they entered. The room fell silent. A few friends, who were still concerned, glanced at me worriedly. I smiled. Why so quiet? Why are you all looking at me? Willow, holding the guy's arm, sat down with a satisfied expression. George, let's have a serious talk today. Okay, go ahead. We've been on and off for years. It's getting boring, and our feelings have faded. I clenched my fists, the ring I had hidden pressing painfully into my palm. Yet, I felt no pain. Willow held the guy's hand, eyes full of affection. I nodded. I understand. Let's just be friends from now on. No need for that. I laughed lightly and stood up. If we're breaking up, let's make it clear, so there's no misunderstanding. Willow raised an eyebrow in surprise, then said, after a moment, you're right. Enjoy your gathering. I'll be going now. As I walked out, closing the door behind me, I heard someone ask, how long do you think George will hold out this time? Two days. He seems really angry this time. I'll bet five days. Willow glanced at the door, which hadn't closed completely, and smirked. Not even a day, that simp will come back. It's always been like this. Hasn't it? Everyone inside agreed. True. George can't live without you. Everyone knows he's crazy about you. I laughed at myself and walked quickly towards the elevator. Back at the apartment, I took out the wedding dress she had liked for so long. Burn it. Just burn it. The flames from the gas stove lit greedily at the edges of the dress. It howled, curled, blackened, and emitted a sickening smell. I closed my eyes, and the flames seemed to turn into dancing figures. Joefully mocking my life, yesterday's hopes became today's ashes, and yesterday's treasures now just a pile of decay, swirling into my nostrils. Unable to bear it, I turned off the stove. Ashes scattered on the stove, 
faint red glows flickering, like fragments of past memories bidding farewell. I shook my head with a bitter smile, the dress wasn't completely burned. I shook off my clothes, neatly placed the remains on our old bed. As I left, I thought for a moment Tan left her a note, the house and everything in it, she could handle as she pleased without asking me. I booked a midnight flight, leaving the capital, returning to the familiar city. When friends heard the news, they organized a gathering in the evening with old classmates and friends. After a few rounds of drinks, someone else came in. A few male classmates' eyes lit up immediately. Anna, what a rare guest. Yeah, Anna, what brings you here tonight? Anna's cheeks were slightly red. I happened to be next door discussing something, heard about the reunion, so I came to join in the fun. As she spoke, her gaze settled on me for a moment before slowly moving away. A friend nudged me. George, Anna's here for you, isn't she? I forced myself to look at her. She was taller than Willow and had a better figure. I squinted at her for a while, then shook my head. No way, we haven't been in touch for years. My friend ignored me, calling out to Anna directly. Anna, let George take you home later. Okay, you've had some drinks. It's not safe to take a taxi alone this late. Anna's eyes crossed the crowd, landing on my face. After about two seconds, I saw her nod. Okay, dot double quotes. My friend smiled and sat down, whispering to me, George, why should Willow get to be fickle? And you can't start a fresh. Besides, Anna is a beautiful woman. Why not give it a shot? How do you know she want to be with me? My friend grinned slyly. Didn't you see the way she looked at you just now? Trust my experience, buddy. The gathering ended, and I accompanied Anna back to her hotel. When we reached the hotel entrance, she unfastened her seatbelt and thanked me. Thank you for bringing me back tonight. I turned to look at her and said, You're welcome. As I pushed open the car door and was about to get out, I suddenly remembered what Willow had said that day. Acting on impulse, I asked, Aren't you going to invite me up for some tea? Anna blushed slightly, but not in silently. As we opened the door, I looked at Anna again. Anna, aren't you afraid? Anna bit her lip, her gaze resolute. George, I'm not afraid. She kissed me in the elevator. I was stunned for a moment, but seeing her flushed face, I lowered my head to meet her kiss. As we entered the room, Anna suddenly stopped me. George, if you regret it, it's not too late. Regret what? I looked at her, a light smile playing on my lips. Why didn't you ask that when you kissed me earlier? Anna stared at me. George, are you serious? For some reason, the uncertainty, sadness, and determination in her eyes made my heart ache. I didn't say anything more, just gently hugged her. I'm very serious, so Anna, give me a little more time. On the seventh day of returning to this city, Willow's sidekick suddenly sent me a WeChat message. George, when are you coming back to Beijing? I have no plans to return for now. Everyone misses you. Maria's birthday is in a few days. Why don't you come back for the gathering? No. Please tell her I'll send her a gift. After a long silence, all right then, take care of yourself, in the private room. Willow's friend handed her the phone. Willow, why don't you call George, he'll definitely listen to you. Willow coldly stared at the few lines on the screen and suddenly stood up, if he doesn't come back, so be it. Willow, don't be so hasty, George is probably just feeling hurt. Besides, he seems genuinely angry this time, you did go too far with that guy. I've already broken up with him. What more does he want? Willow suddenly got angry. No one is allowed to contact George. Even if he dies, all right, all right, no one will contact him. Don't get angry, you just got out of the hospital. You only didn't have stomach problems when George was around. He's only been gone a few days, and you've already worn yourself out. Every word from her friends made Willow's face darker. In the end, she stormed out of the room. Walking downstairs through the crowd, the cold wind blowing against her face only made her more irritable. George, you really have guts. Seven days and not a single call or message. Talking to herself, she added my number to her blacklist. You better not come crying to me. Just as I put down my phone, Anna called. George, let's have hot pot tonight. You'll love it. I'm coming to get you. Anna's voice was clear and soothing, instantly calming the busy afternoon. She took me to an old Chongqing hot pot restaurant. The place was old and small, but business was booming. Anna, 
dressed elegantly, looked completely out of place in such an environment. I watched her carefully wipe my chair with a napkin, skillfully rinse the bowls and chopsticks with hot water, and pour me some juice. Such a delicate girl was doing these trivial things for me. Anna, your boyfriend is really lucky, I couldn't help but sigh. Unlike me, who had an on and off relationship for seven years. Only at the beginning, when Willow was pursuing me, did I and Joe being taken care of. After we graduated from university and lived together for over a year, I felt like a male nanny. Willow had a bad stomach, so I learned to cook and make soups, taking care of her every need. But now I realized, I loved her so much that I lost myself, forgetting the principle of loving oneself first before loving others. How could I expect her love to never fade? Anna, while preparing the foo, glanced at me. Who pulled you I have a boyfriend? I was stunned. Didn't you always have a guy by your side? In college, I thought you grew up together. Anna laughed. He's my cousin. We've been close since we were kids. Then you haven't dated anyone all these years. Anna looked at me quietly but gently. No, George, actually. All these years, I've been waiting for you. That night, we went back to the hotel together. After washing up, I carried her to the bed. Anna looked at me nervously, holding on to my arm tightly. She murmured, George, I've waited for this day for so long. I asked, are you afraid? Anna shook her head, her eyes red. George, I'm willing. Anna, she closed her eyes and hugged me tightly. On the night of our mutual friend Maria's birthday, the gift I bought was delivered to her by a friend. Willow was sitting on the sofa her wine glass almost empty. The gift Anna Ann I chose was a bracelet from a high-end brand she liked. Maria smiled and said, this bracelet is quite exquisite. But when she saw Willow's gloomy expression, she stopped praising it. Willow stared at the bracelet. The brand's logo was subtle and not obvious, but Willow stared at it for a long time. Somehow, her eyes grew wet, a tear welling up. Maria quickly pulled out a couple of tissues from her bag and handed them over. What's wrong? Willow. Just before the tissue touched her cheek, she blinked, a bitter smile forming as her lash brushed away the tear. She pushed the tissue away, but in the last moment of pulling back, her elbow lost control and knocked over the empty wine glass on the table. The glass shattered on the floor, shards scattering everywhere, leaving a long cut on the back of her hand. The room was immediately in chaos. What happened? Willow, are you okay? That cut is deep. The blood won't stop. We need to get to the hospital. Willow sat there, unmoving, the bitter smile never leaving her face. Despite the pain, she still tried to maintain a semblance of dignity. She wiped away an unnoticed tear from the corner of her eye, leaving a blood stain behind. She seemed to be talking to herself. George never bought anything from this brand. He didn't buy this himself. Her voice was low, hoarse, and somber. Maria hurriedly laughed. What's the big deal? He probably just picked it up at a store. After all, it's not your birthday. There's no need to be so meticulous. Yes. Willow, your place in his heart is the most important. Everyone knows he cares about you deeply. Willow shook her head at these words, cares about me. The nosy crowd inexplicably quieted down. Willow, should I call George? We should treat the injury first. Maria suddenly mustered up the courage to take a photo of Willow's injured hand and sent it to George via WeChat. Willow didn't stop her. Maybe because Maria was too fast for her to react, the private room suddenly fell silent. About 10 seconds later, Maria's phone suddenly rang. See, I told you George cares so much about you, Willow. Look, it's George calling, Maria said excitedly. Everyone noticed that Willow's expression seemed to relax a bit. Willow. Will you answer it? Maria handed the phone over, but Willow turned her face away. Maria cheerfully said, I'll answer it, I'll answer it. He <laughs> had, she put the phone on speaker, and as soon as George's voice came through, Willow's lips tightened instantly. Maria, what's going on? Are you hurt? No, it's not me, it's Willow's hand. You don't know how bad it is, how scary it is. The blood won't stop, Maria babbled on but the other end of the line was silent. George, are you listening? Maybe. Maybe you should come back. Willow won't go to the hospital, and the bleeding won't stop. Maria. George's voice was steady and deep. Yes. Yes, I'm listening. George, Maria said, while winking at Willow. 
Don't tell me anything about her from now on. Maria's smile froze instantly. George. And happy birthday, Maria. George, wait, don't hang up, George. But the sound of the call being disconnected was unmistakable. Maria was stunned, holding the phone like a hot potato. She wished she could slap herself into unconsciousness. What business did she have meddling? Causing such a mess, the room was silent. Willow said, did everyone become mute? No one made a sound. Willow laughed again. Why is no one talking? Willow. Don't get angry. The bleeding is getting worse. Willow. You know George's temper better than anyone. Lola, who had been sitting quietly in the corner, suddenly spoke up. Actually, I've wanted to say this for a long time. What you did before was too hurtful. George is a man. What man doesn't need dignity and self-respect? Even if you don't like him anymore, you should break up amicably. Who said I want to break up amicably with him? Willow laughed mockingly. He slept with me for seven years. I spent the best years of my youth with him. A woman's prime only lasts a few years. How could he betray me over a small matter? Can't he just talk it out? Lola laughed softly. Have you ever thought that a man's youth is also youth? How many seven years does a person have? What if George really never comes back? Impossible. No one noticed the slight tremor in Willow's voice. Is there anything in this world that's truly impossible? Once the heart is completely broken and cold, how hard is it to warm it again? Willow, don't do something you'll regret. After saying this, Lola picked up her bag and left. As soon as I hung up the phone, Anna hugged me from behind. She rested her chin on my shoulder, rubbing gently but saying nothing. I couldn't help but laugh, what's wrong? George, will you go back? Go back where? Go back to Beijing. I don't plan on going back for now, but who knows in the future. After all, I haven't done anything disgraceful. Why shouldn't I go back? My home is still there. Anna said nothing again. Only then did I realize what she meant. Are you asking if I'll get back with Willow? Will you? If I say absolutely not, would you believe me? Anna lowered her gaze, rubbing her cheek against mine. I want to believe, Anna. I'm a man. I need my dignity. Do you still have feelings for her? I thought seriously for a moment, if I say there's nothing left at all, it wouldn't be realistic. After all, it's been so many years, Anna suddenly bit me lightly. Don't say any more. George, let me finish. But it's not about lingering feelings or unwillingness. I gently touched Anna's face. Breaking up with her didn't cause me much pain, so maybe I stopped loving her a long time ago. Maybe, from the moment she started to be indifferent to this relationship, I was already prepared for the breakup. I won't. What? I won't be indifferent or fickle. Anna hugged me tighter, and finally, she raised her head to kiss me. George, be with me, but I didn't respond to her kiss. In the end, I gently pushed her away. Anna, I'm sorry, why are you apologizing? She looked down at me, her eyes slightly red. It's my own problem, I avoided her gaze. I don't want to be in a relationship anymore. Then what do you consider these days between us? Ana's voice trembled. George, what do you take me for? A fling. I refused to look at her, afraid I would give myself away. Ana's eyes turned red, and she released her hold, stepping back slowly. She seemed to laugh, but it was a broken laugh. George, you can't treat me like this. Anna, she turned around, grabbed her coat, and walked out. I instinctively took a step after her but stopped. Anna walked to the door, and just as she held the handle, she turned to look at me again. She even gave me a comforting smile. George, I've waited seven years for you. I don't mind waiting another seven years, I sigh, sorry. I really can't promise you anything. Anna left. I sank into the sofa, feeling utterly drained. My heart ached, Anna was to goat, to pure. Compared to her, I felt dirty and unworthy. Even thinking about having her felt like a desecration. Could a man like me deserve such a perfect girl? Could I still hope for a pure, devoted love? These seven years with Willow had left me doubting that I could ever be so lucky again. It was already three in the morning when Anna drove back to the hotel where George was staying. She got out of the car but didn't go inside. Instead, she leaned against the car, quietly looking up. Countless windows were lit but she couldn't tell which one was George's. Still, she knew he was there, 
knew he was in the same city, Hong Kong, with her. She knew that if she walked in, she could see him in 10 minutes. That thought alone made her feel joyful and satisfied. It took her less than two days to figure things out. She easily comforted herself. George had just ended a relationship. It was normal for him not to want to talk about love again. It was perfectly normal for him to be disappointed and resistant to women, to love, and even to marriage. Maybe she was too eager if he felt that maintaining their current relationship would make him more relaxed and comfortable. She really didn't mind not having a tile. The night before I was to leave, I went out drinking with friends. How are things going with Anna? My friend asked, seeing I wasn't talking. He chuckled, no need to say. I understand, buddy. When are you going to get married and treat us to a wedding feast? We've been waiting for your wedding for ages. Among us buddies, you're the only one not married yet. I looked at him and shook my head helplessly. I don't want to delay her. I don't want to fall in love, and I don't want to get married, George. Are you even speaking sense? I just feel that this isn't fair to her. I feel like I've lost the ability to love someone. He suddenly slapped me hard on the head. George, why didn't you say you were unwilling when you took her back to the hotel? Anna waited for you for seven years, and you played with her for a night. Now you act all deep and serious. You call this being responsible? I know the saying one says, another reaps. But it doesn't mean you make your current partner pay for your ex's sins, George. I understand you. I'm scolding you for your own good. Friends won't harm you. I know you've lost your mind temporarily and can't think about relationships clearly. Willa wronged you. But if you do this, you're wrong, Anna. You're just transferring the hurt others caused you on to another person. Is this fair to Anna? I stared at him blankly. The confusion after the breakup seemed to dissolve with his scolding. I was stunned. How did I end up in this dead end? Why did I think not having a relationship was being responsible for her? How did I come up with such a thought? You've been gaslighted by Willow for seven years. You think you don't deserve true love and happiness, is that so? Because of the pain and entanglement caused by repeated breakups, I subconsciously feared establishing a long-term relationship with anyone else. This psychological emotion gradually overshadowed my rational thinking ability, resulting in a distorted value system. George, do you know how outstanding you are? My friend patted my shoulder, taking a sip of his drink. Honestly, this might sound pretentious normally, but we've had a lot to drink tonight, so let's be real, since college. You've been winning scholarships every year. We might not say it often, but which of us roommates doesn't admire you? After graduation, you dared to fight and take risks, while we were still job hunting. You already started your own company, even though you were quite the low fool. Learning to cook can make porridge for a jerk, you should know. A man like you is highly sought after. That idiot breaking up with you will regret it. She never get over losing you for the rest of her life. Now, call Anna immediately and cancel your flight. Don't think I don't know you plan to run away again. I looked at my friend and said, but do you think Anna and I might end up the same way? No. Why? Because I believe a girl who holds on to her pure and sincere heart will never foolishly let go of someone she likes once she gets them. You think she's as stupid as Willow? I shook my head. She definitely wasn't Willow. So, call her now. You can't imagine how happy she be. I thought Anna would be very happy, but I never imagined that a girl who had been pampered since childhood would be as happy as a child the moment she received my call. My friend looked at me proudly. So, are you happy now? I nodded. It seems you were right. I was being a bit foolish a few days ago. You see, you're happy, and Anna is even happier. Isn't that what matters? He laughed suddenly. Whenever I think about how unhappy Willow will be in the future, I feel great. Maybe not. She might already have someone new with her. I smiled faintly. Let's not talk about her anymore. At that moment, I could say such words without any emotional turmoil. It was as if that person no longer had anything to do with me. When Nana's car arrived downstairs, I was just leaving the bar. She stood in the night breeze, smiling at me. I stopped and looked at her. I had to admit, she was indeed beautiful. She was just my type in every way. Willow could like many men at the same time, even before breaking up. She was always ready to move on to the next one. So, naturally, there's nothing wrong with me dating someone new after a breakup. I walked toward her, and she quickly walked toward me.
Amidst the bustling crowd, Anna and I kissed as if no one else existed. Her heart was beating fast. I touched the back of her neck, which was hot. Anna, do you have a fever? Her forehead rested against mine, and she panted softly, her voice gentle. George, I don't know what's wrong with me, whenever I'm with you. I feel like this. I laughed lightly, lowered my head, and kissed her. Maybe it'll get better if we do this more often. Anna's ears turned even redder and hotter. After a while, she whispered, George, what am I to you now? I teased her on purpose. What do you think? A fling or a girlfriend? She asked but didn't wait for my answer. Instead, she buried her face in my chest and said softly, forget it. Don't answer. I don't want to know right now. I gently wrapped my arms around her waist, pulling her closer. You really don't want to know. Girlfriend. Willow's car stopped at the entrance of an alley. She got out and walked into the depths of the alley. An old tailor lived there, whose ancestors had been weavers in Jiangnan. Now elderly, he had long since retired from accepting new clients. But Willow had managed to get him through many connections. The wedding dress that George had burned was sent to the old tailor half a month ago. Today, it was almost fully restored. As she walked, she thought about what Maria had said a few days ago. Maria was right. Not only women but men also long to marry the person they love. She had been with George for seven years, but never thought about marriage. She never expected George would have had thoughts of proposing to her. She had, indeed, gone too far these days, but the young college student was just a whim. She had agreed to his pursuit but never did anything with him. After getting to know him, she found him an interesting and quickly broke up, still thinking about George. Seven years together, she did get tired of George's dullness. He never provided much emotional support, always silently doing things and accompanying her. But some people are like air, colorless and tasteless. Only when lost do you realize how important they are. In the days without George, she couldn't muster the energy to do anything. Even during gatherings with friends, she couldn't stop thinking about him. Especially when she came home late, George would always look for her, calling her friends to check on her safety and urging her to come home. If she refused, no matter how late, he would drive to the bar, pretend to be angry, and take her home. At home, there would always be a bowl of sobering soup. He would hold her, feeding her spoonful by spoonful, gently stroking her face, his eyes full of tenderness and concern. Back then, all of this made her feel annoyed, but now, she missed it deeply. Willow thought that this time, if George came back, she would propose to him. She had long known how much George wanted to marry her. The old master's craftsmanship was indeed excellent. The wedding dress was almost identical to its original state. Willow pay and left. But her phone suddenly rang. She felt inexplicably nervous until she saw Maria's name flashing on the screen. Her wildly beating heart slowly calmed down. Willow, there's something I think I should tell you. What is it? Don't get too upset when you hear this. It might just be a rumor. What is it exactly? Maria suddenly felt a pang of discomfort. How did it come to this? Of all people, George had to be rumored with Anna. Willow had always had the most friction with Anne over the years. Especially two years ago, because of a major project, Willow and Anna, both top fashion designers in the industry, competed for the designer position at the Paris fashion show. Willow had been confident, but Anna won effortlessly. It was the first time Willow felt something she was determined to get was taken away from her. Since then, the two had been at odds. I said, don't get mad. It's just hearsay, and there's no concrete proof. Just tell me, someone saw George in Hong Kong. Willow's grip on her phone tightened, but her voice remained calm. What about him in Hong Kong? He seems to be with Anna. Of course, it might just be a meal, nothing more. I see, Willow, if there's nothing else, I'll hang up now. Willow ended the call. She carried the large paper bag containing the wedding dress George had bought. She walked through the cold early winter wind in Beijing, step by step, until she reached the entrance of the alley and her car. Suddenly, she stopped and a faint, mocking smile appeared on her delicate face. The next moment, she unhesitatingly threw the exquisite paper bag into the trash can. Two months after George left, Willow sent him a WeChat message. The message was delivered but went unanswered. The message read, I plan to sell the apartment. What should I do with your stuff? Perhaps he forgot that George had left her a note telling her to handle everything as she pleased. 
Or perhaps she was just looking for an excuse to message him, in her heart. She might have thought this was her way of giving George a way out. If he were smart, he would know to take the opportunity. Despite her seemingly bad temper, she was actually easy to appease. George never replied. The apartment wasn't sold. George's clothes and belongings were left untouched, as if he had never left. Willow often came to the apartment late at night, lying on George's bed and staying awake until dawn. Three months after George left, on another unchanging late night, as the clock was about to strike midnight, Willow dialed George's number. In college, George was an honest and innocent guy, though his family was average. He never had to worry about food and clothing, and his parents loved him dearly but were very strict. It wasn't until the fall of his graduation year that George started living with her. She still remembered that night vividly. They were both so nervous they were shaking all over. After it was over, George held her, his eyes red. Willow, I will never let you down. We'll be together forever. I will treat you well, take good care of you, and always love you. Willow, we'll be together forever, right? But that George, who thought he would always be with the girl he loved, had long been lost to her, so long that she could hardly remember his expression the last time they broke up. Was he nodding with a smile, or were his eyes red? The phone rang for a long time, just when she thought he wouldn't answer. He picked up. At that moment, she wanted to say, George, come back. But what she said instead was, George, come back when you're done playing. Her foolish and laughable words were interrupted by a gentle female voice that laughed like a cold, hard ice that wrapped around her, made Willow feel as if she was entirely encased in ice, unable to move. Willow, apologize quickly, or someone else might take your place. Anna, Willow's eyes turned red as she gritted her teeth and uttered the name. It's me. Anna, where's George? Let him answer the phone, gripping her phone tightly. Willow's voice trembled. Anna, if you dare take advantage of this situation, he can't come to the phone. Anna lowered her head and gently kissed the man sleeping beside her. He's exhausted tonight and just fell asleep. If it's important, I can wake him up with a kiss. Willow's voice abruptly stopped. Anna ended the call and casually turned off her phone. She lay down and gently hugged the sleeping man beside her. In his sleep, George held her tightly. Anna, I often wondered what it would be like to meet Willow again. She came from a wealthy family, full of pride. We had broken up amicably, so if we ever ran into each other, she might either ignore me or not and exchange pleasantries. After all, my parents and relatives are in Beijing. And Willow and I share some mutual friends. It's unlikely we would never cross paths again. But I never imagined that the high and mighty rich girl, always surrounded by admirers, would have a moment of such helplessness and distress. At that time, I was in a great mood, wearing a matching black cashmere coat with Anna, walking out of the revolving door with her, laughing and chatting. And then, I saw Willow getting out of a car. I was stunned and stopped in my tracks. Anna's warm fingers gently held mine. Willow's dress was wrinkled, and her makeup was smudged. She looked tired, with red veins in her eyes. People bustled around us, and cheerful music played from the nearby fountain. The scene felt like a slow-motion moment from a movie. Only I wasn't a bystander, but one of the unprepared protagonists. Anna instinctively tugged at my sleeve. Willow's expression gradually calmed. She called my name softly, as she used to during our passionate days. George. I stood still, the cheerful music still echoing around me, but for some reason, I felt an indescribable sadness in my heart. Maybe it was for the George who heard those hurtful words that night. Maybe it was for the George who was suddenly told they were breaking up. Or maybe it was for the George who loved sincerely for seven years, but let go completely in just seven days. George, come back to Beijing with me. Willow never looked at Anna, her gaze was fixed on me incredibly gentle. I couldn't even remember the last time she looked at me like this before we broke up. Willow stopped about a meter in front of me. George, let's get married when we go back. Let's live well together. Okay. She spoke so earnestly that I almost believed it. That the Willow who said she loved another man not long ago was just my imagination. But it's too late. Willow, a broken heart can't be mended, and the new heart that grew out of the swamp is already filled with someone else. I shook my head gently. Willow, just go. George, I never touched that guy. 
I broke up with him in less than three days. I had the wedding dress you bought me repaired by the old tailor. And our wedding rings, I've kept them safe. George, I even had a custom-made diamond ring. I'm serious. Willow's eyes grew redder, her voice trembling slightly. She held out a delicate ring box like a treasure, her eyes filled with cautious hope and longing. Seeing her like this, I couldn't deny it that I still felt sad, but it was only sadness. Willow, I already have a girlfriend. I tightly held Ana's hand, pulling her into my arms. The color drained from Willow's face instantly. Her gaze slowly dropped, finally resting on our intertwined fingers. On our ring fingers were matching rings, just like the ones she and I once wore. George, are you serious? I took a deep breath, looked at Anna, and then nodded firmly. Yes, I'm serious. Willow suddenly let out a low laugh. You think she's serious about you? You think she truly cares? Two years ago, she fought me tooth and nail for a designer position, and now she's clinging to you. George, don't you think she has ulterior motives? Would she dare to openly admit she's with you just to spite me? George, you're still so naive. We were together for seven years, went through so much. Do you really think Anna won't mind at all? Do you really think you and she will have a happy ending? Aren't you afraid that being with her will just be another seven years like with me? The cheerful music had stopped without me noticing. Willow's voice also fell silent. At first, there was a void in my ears. Then there was a faint sound of something breaking gently. And after that sound, there was an immense sense of relief and release. C. I didn't even feel sad anymore. It's just a pity that life always has some regrets. Until today, I never regretted loving Willow, good or bad. It was still my experience. But at this moment, I couldn't help but feel the pain of regret. Why couldn't I see in seven years that deep down, Willow never really respected me? Yes, I'm just an ordinary person, but she is a wealthy heiress, to me. We were seriously in love. But to her, I was probably just a playmate. I stood still, the cheerful music still echoing around me, but for some reason, I felt an indescribable sadness in my heart. Maybe it was for the George who heard those hurtful words that night. Maybe it was for the George who was suddenly told they were breaking up. Or maybe it was for the George who loved sincerely for seven years, but let go completely in just seven days. George, come back to Beijing with me. Willow never looked at Anna. Her gaze was fixed on me, incredibly gentle. I couldn't even remember the last time she looked at me like this before we broke up. Willow stopped about a meter in front of me. George, let's get married when we go back. Let's live well together. Okay. She spoke so earnestly that I almost believed it. That the Willow who said she loved another man not long ago was just my imagination. But it's too late. Willow, a broken heart can't be mended. And the new heart that grew out of the swamp is already filled with someone else. I shook my head gently. Willow, just go. George, I never touched that guy. I broke up with him in less than three days. I had the wedding dress you bought me repaired by the old tailor. And our wedding rings, I've kept them safe. George, I even had a custom-made diamond ring. I'm serious. Willow's eyes grew redder, her voice trembling slightly. She held out a delicate ring box like a treasure, her eyes filled with cautious hope and longing. Seeing her like this, I couldn't deny it that I still felt sad, but it was only sadness. Willow. I already have a girlfriend. I tightly held Ana's hand, pulling her into my arms. The color drained from Willow's face instantly. Her gaze slowly dropped, finally resting on our intertwined fingers. On our ring fingers were matching rings, just like the ones she and I once wore. George, are you serious? I took a deep breath, looked at Anna, and then nodded firmly. Yes, I'm serious. Willow suddenly let out a low laugh. You think she's serious about you? You think she truly cares? Two years ago, she fought me tooth and nail for a designer position, and now she's clinging to you. George, don't you think she has ulterior motives? Would she dare to openly admit she's with you just to spite me? George, you're still so naive. We were together for seven years, went through so much. Do you really think Anna won't mind at all? Do you really think you and she will have a happy ending? Aren't you afraid that being with her will just be another seven years like with me? The cheerful music had stopped without me noticing. Willow's voice also fell silent. At first, there was a void in my ears. Then there was a faint sound of something breaking gently. 
And after that sound, there was an immense sense of relief and release. See, I didn't even feel sad anymore. It's just a pity that life always has some regrets. Until today, I never regretted loving Willow, good or bad. It was still my experience. But at this moment, I couldn't help but feel the pain of regret. Why couldn't I see in seven years that deep down, Willow never really respected me? Yes, I'm just an ordinary person, but she is a wealthy heiress. To me, we were seriously in love, but to her, I was probably just a playmate. Anna looked at me with sadness in her eyes. My face was a bit pale, but I still smiled and shook my head at her. I'm fine, Anna. Anna looked at me for a while, then suddenly kissed me hard. George, I, Anna, have always lived and acted without regrets. But at this moment, I really regret not taking you from her earlier. Willow, you never deserved George's love and affection for these seven years. Maybe it was this sentence that completely enraged Willow. She lost her composure and spoke recklessly. And what about you, Anna? You went after a man who was with me for seven years. What right do you have to stand here and spout nonsense? What do you like about him? Do you truly like George, or do you just like Willow's boyfriend, George? Anna slapped Willow hard across the face. Willow, not one to back down, immediately tried to retaliate, but I quickly grabbed her wrist. Willow's face turned livid. George, you saw that, right? She hit me first, yes, she did. Willow, I apologize on her behalf. I let go of her wrist and firmly placed Anna behind me. George, are you really protecting her like this? Tears fell from Willow's eyes one by one. She hit me first, George. What do you want me to do about it? George, I'm hurt. Willow pointed to her swollen face. My face is swollen, it hurts a lot. I looked at her and calmly said, I'll call an ambulance for you, we'll cover all the costs. George, you know that's not what I want. Willow tried to reach out to me. But I stepped aside. George. All the emotions Willow had been holding back shattered. She looked at me with utter sorrow, but in my heart, there was no longer any turmoil. Willow didn't speak again. The setting sun quietly elongated her shadow. Maybe it was when George called out Anna's name, or maybe it was when he grabbed her wrist to prevent her from hitting Anna, that she finally realized George no longer loved her. Lola's question from that day had become a reality. George would never come back to her. She thought she could easily let go of the seven-year relationship. She thought she was the one in control. She thought she would always win. But at that moment, she understood. The one who couldn't let go was her. Willow. George was the string holding the kite. Once the string broke, the kite lost its direction and could never return home. I watched Willow turn and walk towards her car. Watched her lonely figure disappear. The setting sun was suddenly swallowed by the horizon. The sky turned a pale rose blue as Willow's car drove away. It felt like those seven years from 17 to 24 vanished with it. I knew from that day forward, the name Willow would be like any other ordinary name in the world. I wouldn't intentionally forget her, but I would never actively think of her again. George, Anna gently held my arm. I turned, looked down at her, and smiled softly. Let's go home. The night I proposed to Anna, I drank a lot. Anna also got drunk and said, a lot while holding me. But I only remembered the simplest two sentences. George, we will never have a seven-year period like that. George, we will never break up. Everyone means it when they make a vow. Later, when they break it, they wonder how anyone could have believed in it. That I believed in Anna. Actually, I believed in myself. I believed that sincere love would not be let down at least once. The day I got engaged to Anna, I received a gift from Beijing. It was the ring Willow had once given me. There was a car in the box with Willow's handwriting. She said, George, I will always keep that wedding dress waiting for your return. Anna saw the card too. She was a little jealous. Too bad. I won't give her the chance. But that night, the ring disappeared, and I no longer cared about such trivial matters. In the third year of our marriage, Anna gave birth to our son, Chubby. Not long after he was born, Willow sent many valuable gifts. I asked Anna for her opinion. Our son doesn't need these. Let's donate them to the orphanage. Look at her. Not getting married at her age and always focusing on other people's husbands and children. It's like she's asking for trouble. I couldn't help but laugh. Why worrying about others? Anna suddenly brightened up. 
In front of all the maids and nannies, she grabbed my arm and shook it. George, what you just said was so nice. Can you say it again? I teased her. What did I say? Anna pouted. You said, why worrying about others? I found it amusing but also felt a bit of heartache. To two years after I graduated from college were the worst for Anna, but she never told me, never showed any negative emotions in front of me. Why worrying about others? The most important thing is for us to live our lives well. I said this as she wanted, then lifted her up and placed her on my lap. I kissed her slightly right ear and whispered softly, Baby, our son is two months old. Let's go to bed early tonight. Willow's side story. When George's son was three years old, their family of three returned to Beijing to visit relatives and stayed for several months. We shared many mutual friends who held gatherings almost every day. Naturally, I didn't attend these gatherings, but every time a gathering ended, I couldn't help but ask about him. They said that after getting married, George went to Germany for two years of study. During those two years, Anna traveled back and forth between Hong Kong and Germany just to spend more time with him. Later, George returned to Hong Kong and started his own company, achieving modest success. Anna supported all his decisions and choices unconditionally, always by his side, accompanying him in his endeavors without any complaints. She could have lived a pampered life as a wealthy wife, but she didn't. George became more and more outstanding. Anna grew more beautiful, but it wasn't just her beauty. Their relationship got better and better, and their child was incredibly adorable, looking very much like George when he was little. He never knew that I kept a photo of him at five years old in my wallet. Beijing is so large, yet our circles are small. But George and I never crossed paths, not even once. One afternoon, by chance, I saw their child, Chubby, in a Buffett restaurant. He was hiding behind a rockery, secretly eating a box of ice cream, looking like a cute little squirrel with his cheeks puffed up. My steps halted involuntarily as I watched him, unable to look away. After a while, I heard George calling his name. He heard it too. His eyes widened in fear, holding the ice cream box, not knowing what to do. Driven by a sudden impulse, I walked over, squatted down, and asked softly, Are you afraid your dad will catch you eating ice cream? He nodded, his big eyes turning nimbly, full of alertness. Would you like me to help you hi? He hesitated, looking at me for a long time, after seemingly determining I wasn't a bad person, he nodded again. I picked him up. He was small, soft, and well-behaved, nestling into my arms. His little hands played with the accessories on my dress. Then he suddenly spoke in a sweet, childish voice, Auntie, do you know me? My throat felt choked with something, a bitter taste filling my mouth. Everything before me became increasingly blurred. If time could go back to that year, that night, I wouldn't let any of it happen. George would be my husband. We would get married in Beijing, and I would bear his children. I lifted my face, holding back the tears, and looked down at him with a smile. Yes, Auntie knows you. Do you know my name? His soft little hands hugged me. I'll tell you a secret. My nickname is Chubby. I'm Chubby, so my nickname is Chubby. Is that so? That's a wonderful name. I kissed his soft cheek. All right, we can't hide for too long, or your mom will worry. He nodded obediently. I'll take one more bite of ice cream. Just one more bite. He took a big bite, smiling mischievously at me like a little kitten. I patted his head. Go find your dad now. I watched him walk away. It was like having a distant dream, long and beautiful, like fine, warm sand slipping through my fingers, disappearing in the wind. I didn't look at George again, I was afraid I would break down and cry uncontrollably in the bustling hall. George wouldn't care about anything related to me, but Anna would surely find my behavior ridiculous. Yes, my early life was so absurd and laughable, and the rest of my life, even that absurdity and ridicule, became a delusion.